Hello and welcome back to Oncology for Medical Students. This section of videos is on oncological emergencies, with this video focusing on superior vena cava syndrome. The job of the superior vena cava is to return blood from the head, neck, upper chest and arms back to the right side of the heart. Superior vena cava syndrome occurs when the superior vena cava becomes blocked. This is most commonly due to tumours that either compress the vessel from the outside or invade the vessel itself. It's most associated with lung cancers and lymphomas. Non-small cell lung cancers are the most common, making up to 50% of cases. This, however, is really down to the fact that non-small cell cancers are more common than small cell lung cancers. Non-cancerous causes include blood clots, often due to pacemaker wires that sit in the vena cava, TB and aortic aneurysms. Essentially, anything capable of blocking the vessel can cause the syndrome. The most common symptom is shortness of breath, but patients also complain of facial swelling that is particularly worse when lying down, arm swelling, cough or chest pain. Symptoms and signs tend to result from the fact that blood can't return back to the heart as easily as it should. This means that the pressure increases in the veins and leads to symptoms such as swelling in the face and distended veins in the neck and chest. The blood, however, can find its way back through other veins, which are known as collateral veins, which can also become distended. Despite being considered an oncological emergency, it's rarely life-threatening. However, if not treated, the tumours can go on to invade the trachea and block the airway, which could potentially lead to cardiorespiratory arrests and death. Also, there's a risk of cerebral edema, swelling of the brain due to excess fluid, that potentially could lead to ischemia, which is a lack of oxygen that leads to cell death, and increased intracranial pressures, both of which are life-threatening. Symptoms of cerebral edema include headaches, confusion and dropping of conscious level. Unfortunately, for SVC syndrome to occur, it often means that the cancer is locally advanced and usually not curable. In these cases, it marks a change in therapy towards symptom management and palliation rather than cure. Next we'll talk about how SVC syndrome is diagnosed. Clinical signs on examination might include facial swelling and distended neck or chest veins. Around 84% of patients will have an abnormal chest x-ray, with the most common findings being mediastinal widening or pleural effusion. The most useful imaging modality is contrast CT. This can identify the level of the obstruction and the presence of collateral veins. If the clinical history, examination and scans are suggestive of a malignant cause, it's vital to get a proper tissue diagnosis, because this will ultimately help us decide what the best treatment will be. Cells can be obtained through sputum cytology, in other words, looking under the microscope for cancerous cells in the sputum, pleural fluid cytology, or by biopsying nearby accessible lymph nodes. Supraclavicular nodes are usually a good option as they can be easily sampled with ultrasound guidance using a small needle just above the clavicle or collarbone. If cells can't be accessed this way, then endoscopic camera tests can be used, including bronchoscopy, which is in the lungs, or mediastinoscopy, which is in the mediastinum. Treatment aims to ease symptoms and treat the underlying cancer, but this will depend on the nature of the cancer itself. In the first instance, measures like sitting the patient up straight and giving oxygen can begin to have some symptomatic relief. Steroids can reduce swelling and again help symptoms. In the past, SVC syndrome caused by malignancy was considered an emergency and most patients were treated rapidly with radiotherapy. However, most patients now don't receive emergency radiotherapy because in the majority of cases, the development of symptoms and complications is not that rapid and there's usually time to make a more accurate tissue diagnosis. On top of this, radiotherapy can damage tissue and make it more difficult to later make a tissue diagnosis. If patients have airway compromise or evidence of cerebral edema, this is an emergency and requires emergency stenting and radiotherapy. Radiotherapy is a useful local treatment targeting the cells themselves, 
Whereas stenting involves placing a stent, which is essentially a wire tube, which is introduced through one of the large veins, moved up to the blockage in the superior vena cava and opens up the vessel again, which provides symptomatic relief. Otherwise, the most appropriate course of action is to get a histological diagnosis. This is because if we know what the cancer is, then we can choose the right therapy, which is more likely to work. For example, in small cell lung cancers and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, chemotherapy tends to be very effective as these cancers are very sensitive to chemotherapy. In the case of non-small cell lung cancer, however, they aren't as responsive to chemotherapy and treatment tends to be things like radiotherapy and stent placement. So in summary, superior vena cava syndrome or malignant superior vena cava syndrome as we're talking about in this video is caused by tumours that block the superior vena cava. It's most often caused by lung cancers or lymphomas such as non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Symptoms and signs most commonly include shortness of breath and neck and face swelling. Diagnosis is made by CT and also tissue sample and histology. And the treatment depends on the type of cancer. This involves in emergencies, um, stent placement and radiotherapy, or in non-emergency situ situations, a histological diagnosis first and then the selection of the appropriate treatment for the cancer causing the blockage. Thanks again for listening. Um, if you found the videos useful, please click like and subscribe to the channel um, and look out for more in this series of oncological emergencies. Thank you and see you soon. Bye.